Boom. Salutations. <laughs> what I'm calling this, I call these videos a fast blast. That's what this is. So we're going to go through this information and I'm going to try to present it in a way that is like that. So it's going to be quick and hopefully on point. So what I want to do is take something and actually change things as far as our way of perceiving things and taking it a step forward and expanding it as in contact modalities. All right. So what I want to talk about is the NASA tether incident from 1996. Most of you are probably already familiar with that, so we won't go over that. But what that is is, um, well, not too much anyway. What that is is a tether that was a couple miles long that NASA had put out uh, for a, an experiment. It's called the NASA tether experiment. And what happened during this is they're seeing all these objects being attracted towards this, uh, this, 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 uh, this tether. And all these objects, some of them look like balls, some of them look circular with a hole in it, all right? Now, provided that what I first thought and assumed and kind of had to combine with something else is that I thought these were what Trevor Constables calls cosmic critters, okay, that would actually be around the orgone energies. I saw at orgone machines, which can be photographed in infrared on ultraviolet ultraviolet as well. I've done other, other videos on that, so I won't go on that. Look at DOR and Orgone and the Orgone videos I've done on the channel, all right? So I assume that that's kind of what these were. I thought these were these critters that assume naturally, especially because around this tether, this looked like a swarm, all right? So this is a swarm that looks like it's around this tether, and that looks like living beings to me, more so like amoeba, flagellum, things like that, more along the amoeba, especially the bigger one. You saw a picture I put up of it. It's got the circle in the middle. That looks like more like a large microorganism. So that's kind of what I was thinking this was, but taking this and combining this with the research of a science, a NASA scientist that was around in the 80s and 90s. I think he died probably a few years ago, but his name was Louis A. Frank, and he was the gentleman that had talked about... Uh, basically the cosmic snowball theory thing or cosmic or water comets where comets come in here have water on them they become part of our atmosphere and it's how actually the oceans were created now a lot of scientists I think laughed at him and he was discredited at first till he started producing evidence and he started talking about what was called was that the uh, oh uh, the uh, Polar space, the NASA solar or polar spacecraft, and when the pictures of that and the foot, the telemetry of that, 
you see all these uh, these things streaking and coming down in into the into the atmosphere. Okay, and that's seen a, like a bunch of that telemetry from that, and that's what he was saying. Also, were these uh, water balls that were coming in, evaporating in our in our atmosphere, a thousand of them that were technically able to miss spacecraft because um, uh, uh, well anyway we'll talk about that later we'll combine that so anyway that's just the theory there of Lewis uh, Frank's Lewis A Frank which is very important I think as far as like how the oceans came about and some of the ways that the water maintains on here and I take that and want to combine that with something else which is see I'm getting excited I'm almost getting ahead of myself <laughs> I want to combine this with something else something that probably several people are familiar with by Robert Temple, The Serious Mystery. Okay, and that takes us into the doggone. He spent a lot of time with the doggone. So when you actually start reading that and reading what the doggone elder told him about the Nomo themselves. So I put tar part of this as aquatic extraterrestrials, why I'm incorporating this, but really I'm talking about the, do the Nomo a lot too. Now they were Syrians, so they come from Sirius. But when you think about actually any type of amphibious humanoid, amphibious beings they would come here they would require a vessel that has water okay a lot a lot of water within their vessel and it was described by the elders being like a thin a thin shell a thin metal shell surrounding an inner bubble of water that these nomo came in when the nomo came here they went into the ocean and started operating out of the ocean immediately they went into the water Right, and they started coming and dealing with the algon, but they went to the ocean first. So anyway, he described this as actually type of, you know, almost like, it seems like almost like a balloon. The metal being on the outside, the inside being water. And we want to think about something. I put up a couple of pictures of the Zindi from Star Trek Enterprise. That is, there's races there that where they had the aquatics, they had the aerials, they had the, 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 uh, well, the apes type of beings, but they had one they called the Aquatic Zindi, and they had ships that were called Aquatic Cruisers that had a lot of water in them that they were floating around in, okay? So I think that's the situation you're bringing with, to this also, but when looking at these balls, the fact they don't hit satellites and things like that, they appear to be under intelligent control. So what I'm saying is that maybe not just are these things we're seeing swarming that NASA tether just biological creatures like amoeba like but they may also be vessels with inside because some of those you're seeing passing through there are miles big okay some you've seen passing by that tether those are like two miles long or something like two miles wide or something that's huge so that takes us when we start thinking about microscopically I've talked a lot about that a lot and microbes how microbes can be aware on the conscious level we start taking that also to maybe what may be bigger beings too. And is that Syrians coming back? Or the proposal also that these water balls that are coming into our atmosphere, some of them are intelligently guided and they're missing satellites and missing things. Look at what you're watching on that tether incident. You're seeing these things are intelligently controlled. So that's giving us something else is are those Syrians or other type of aquatic races returning here or are those their vessels? We have to expand our contact modalities. That's why I keep harping on this a little. I just did something about the biosphere and some of the craft and the, the organic craft. So this is dealing with not just the organic component, but also the water component quite a bit. Are these beings that are coming here in water? And we're also seeing this through the quantum hologram in some way, what we're seeing there. So it's not immediate. So it takes us to a whole other issue when dealing with some of these craft that can change their density. We know that, we've seen them do that, we've seen them go disappear and invisible, and these beings are, I think, for the most part, are just beyond our vibrational uh, spectrum here. Uh, Something else that you can also look up that the NASA tether experiment, NASA tether incident, it's also called STS-75, STS-75. And what I want to do is throw in something else with this, which is the Dropa Stones. Those of you that are familiar with the Dropa Stones, if you are not, please look them up and the pieces that were found in that cave and the, the people that come along with that and the story that comes along with it. Quite interesting, all right? But in, in correlating that, look at the way that all the Dropa, Dropa Stones are formed as compared to what this donut-looking type of UFO looks like 
outside of the NASA, te NASA tether. You'll see the same formation. So I think that maybe this is a little more than connected. Sometimes these separate things are connected when we think that they're not. So that's something I want to kind of bring to connection with that is that the Tropa stones also have the same formation as the NASA tether. But also in addition with that, that's what leads me to believe that there's definitely the biological aspect and that these look a lot like the also the also, sorry excuse me also the um, critters that were discovered by Trevor John, Trevor Trevor James Constable around the Oregon Energy uh, devices around the Cloud Busters especially when I made Cloud Busters myself when I was much younger I started feeling funny and I did a video about that and I found myself when on ultraviolet uh, on a infrared film with ultraviolet filters with those old cameras you would catch these things around these orgone machines, all right? So they look a lot, to the, a lot like amoeba of some type. And as the same as this uh, donut, donut looking UFO outside of the NASA tether, there are these black circles in the meter, meter, middle of them that looks like almost a nuclei of a, of, of a amoeba or of a microorganism, something like that. Be, be very aware, and I've went on videos over this. Please look back on the channel over Oregon Energy. I've done about three videos over that. And something that is seen when you get a photo of either a craft or a being that is generating this Oregon field, it tends to create the Oregon field itself, generates a, makes a black void on the camera. So on these, on these, on these circular, on these uh, UFOs, you see that, that black in the middle there. Check that out. I think that is very valid to show that this is a orgone generating mechanism, organism, whatever you want to call it. And something else that's to be, to be said about this is at the time that this NASA tether incident was happening, it was actually crossing in orbit over Africa, over the Mali, the Egyptian area, one of those. Look that up. You can look that up. I find that very interesting. When you look at these balls coming down, how they're attracted to that, where they're at in orbit, is that in somewhat reminiscent of the NOMO coming back or some of these aquatic beings coming back? When they come back, they're going to change density, but they're going to do that in the, in the ocean. We wouldn't see them coming in. Is that some of these water balls that are coming in that's connected to Lewis A. Frank uh, observation? All right, these are just things to tie in there. And I want to say that that makes it, um, I think, somewhat more palatable. But to look at these might not be the separate things that we think they are. Um, Another thing, are these water, this, I've heard this proposed a few times, are these wa water balls, these water comets coming in here, as Frank calls them, are they also not just sentient, as you can see, but are they here to heal, to help heal the, oz the ozone layer, maybe the metals in our atmosphere, some of the problems with the ocean? Is that also one of the ways we're being sent help? It's worthy of just expanding our modalities to include that. Got me? <laughs> Um, quickly, uh, that's just it. I want to focus again. I've talked a lot about bio biological organic craft. I think that including the water factor of this and the water beings like the NOMO is very important on top of what I've already talked about my personal experiences and what I know about the fungus of the, of the craft also. So that's just something to incorporate in there. I'm doing this in the name of consciousness because I think a lot of real information is not coming out. We're hearing a lot of the same things in the media right now. It's getting people caught up, all right? Um, oh yeah, one last thing. At the same time that this, uh, this tether incident happened over Mali, there was um, a crop circle that, that occurred very quickly. I mean, I think it's like the same day. And uh, across, across from Stonehenge, which also looks like a circle then again, uh, the same type of formation, but this, this uh, crop formation looks again like these beings to a degree, this circular formation, I'll put that up also. So it's just something I think that there's some sort of connection there, the intelligence-wise, that we're being spoken to. So anyway, um, that's most of it. Please subscribe. I want to thank the people on Patreon. That's the reason why this video is going to YouTube. I'm making this one for YouTube. So. Thank you to the people on Patreon. There's just a few people went there that are supporting me. That's keeping this work coming. So thank you very much. Um, please subscribe. Help me beat the shadow ban. Peace.